Conversations That Matter podcast. My name is John Harris. Just wanted uh, to leave you, uh, hopefully, a quick podcast here this morning. I saw some things uh, when I logged in that I thought were um, were interesting and important enough for me to mention. But I uh, wanted to say before I get to that, uh, thank you for all your prayers. As you can tell, I'm probably still sounding a little sick. I uh, have had the fever, but that left me probably about two days ago. And so all I have now is a bit of a cough, some congestion. Uh, I have uh, a little bit of a pain in my right ear, uh, kind of right above the ear. I'm not sure what that's about, but I, I was looking that up online, and it may not even be related to the COVID, so I'm not sure. But uh, but that's even subsiding somewhat. So every day is a little better, and I appreciate uh, all your prayers and your supportive messages. I've, I've received a number of those over the last few days. It uh, means a lot. And, uh, and and you're all just very, um, you're important to me, and uh, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank all of you for um, your support and your prayers and encouragement and all of that. Um, I, uh, I wanted to mention something briefly, too, about the podcast yesterday. I recorded the podcast I did with Bill Roach probably two weeks ago at least, and uh, so that wasn't not that I, there's no way I'd have the mental ability to do that uh, during <laughs> the time it actually dropped, which is when I had uh, COVID and um, wasn't feeling the best. Uh, I was starting to get over it, but I, I just wanted to let everyone know that um, you know I appreciate everyone who's reached out about that. There's there's a lot of people who are uh, get, giving pushing a lot of resources in my direction. And I, I don't know if there's a resource that has been pushed to me that I haven't already read, just so, to let you guys know. Um, I, that, that podcast, I, I get the impression that what's going on is uh, there's some people, especially uh, some more pr- people on the more presuppositional side of the apologetics um, uh, debate, if you will, uh, who are, are very concerned that I'm, I'm rejecting all of that and that... Uh, uh, you know, I need to read some Greg Bonson or something. And I, I do actually have a whole shelf with presuppositional apologetic stuff. I have a lot on my Kindle. Um, I mean, I have the, to me, this is this is somewhat of the standard. If you're going to uh, understand presuppos- presuppositional apologetics, Van Til's Apologetic by Bonson. And uh, so I've read that, I've highlighted it, all of that. So that, that that's something I probably at least at one time, I, I think I'm still probably there, I would have known a lot more about presuppositional apologetics than even, you know, the social justice stuff, which I've written books on. So um, so I, I am definitely uh, aware of that and um, appreciative uh, to everyone who is uh, recommending resources. Um, I, the, the, the podcast, just to, to briefly put a cap on that with Bill, was really meant more to advertise Bill's uh, International uh, um, Society of Christian Apologetics conference in um, Charlotte at the SES campus. And it's because it, not a lot of Christian conferences are really talking about this issue, and, and, and this is one that's going to talk about social justice. And so uh, he wanted to advertise it. I wanted him to be able to use my platform to advertise it. And so we were just kicking around, you know, hey, he's already come on here and talked about standpoint theory and inerrancy and well what else is there to talk about what do you want to talk about and um, one of the things that is in the apologetics world that's going on right now as a bit of a debate uh, as far as I know I've seen some of this but I'm not immersed in that world is this debate over uh, Aquinas and natural theology and where does that fit if it fits at all and so uh, that was something Bill felt he uh, could speak to in a way that would be helpful, and I said, sure. So uh, he came on, and, and that's the res- that's why we had the podcast we did. It certainly wasn't, uh, I, I, I'll just put it, put it this way, I'm still very much, I would consider myself in the presuppositional camp, and, and there's a few books, uh, books that haven't been recommended to me, ironically, over the last few days, but books that I'm uh, planning on reading. Um, uh, one one is a um, I don't know I think it's more of a thesis uh, trying to defend presuppositional apologetics against the charge that uh, it's engaged in idealism that that's the that it's that it actually is compatible with realism so I want to read that um, there's another book I just downloaded to my Kindle yesterday that I haven't started yet um, on uh, reformational theology and this one's on the other side this one's more of a rejection of presuppositional apologetics as not a historically uh, historically reformed position. And 
Um, there, there was a time I probably wouldn't have read books like that, <laughs> that, that one especially, just because I was so immersed. I, I mean, Bonson was really the guy I think that more than anyone else kind of got me into that, and I just wanted to read everything Bonson had ever written and listen to everything he had ever said. And uh, it was from him that I got to Van Til, um, and, and of course learned a lot of negative things about Gordon Clark, but I, I do have uh, Gordon Clark's historiography, which I have thumbed through, and uh, there's some good stuff in it. Um, and then, um, of course, Francis Schaeffer was one of Van Til's students as well, and so I've read a lot of Francis Schaeffer, and, uh, and then some of his students, and, uh, and Michael Butler, and I don't even know who all, I got a bunch here, uh, that are lesser known uh, presuppositional apologists. But, uh, but anyway, I um, uh, very much, you know, what it was is it really worked. <laughs> I just, I remember the first time I really tried it and I thought, wow, this is powerful stuff, especially for someone who was involved in college ministry and evangelism. And um, I tend to be a little bit of a pragmatic guy and I thought, I'm gonna keep using this stuff and I'm gonna learn it, you know, front, front words and backwards. So um, that is still where I am, um, but I am open to, to reading some more. Um, about that, and I very much come down on the side of realism in the social justice debate and, and seen idealism uh, as a, a big problem and uh, the subjectivity that comes from that. So um, that may be, you know, because there's, there's uh, uh, people who are claiming that presuppositional apologetics, it's just, I, it's idealism, it's kind of uh, over microwaved over uh, idealism, it's Kant, it's all of this, and and so I'm I'm open to reading more about it. That's that's kind of where I am uh, at this point. So this this show is not about that topic. Uh, I could make it about that topic if I wanted, but that's that's not my intention at this point. I think uh, that's honestly that's not the biggest topic right now. And I'm not saying it's not important because it definitely is. It's just that uh, there there's bigger fish to fry. There's there's some really big things going on that. Um, as you know, whether you're evidentialist, whether you're classical, presuppositional, uh, no matter what school of apologetics, no matter what flavor of eschatology, if you're just an orthodox Christian, then we need to take a, a stand against the things that are happening right now. And that's been my priority for the last uh, three, four years uh, on this podcast and, and through my writings and all of that. And so that's not changing. I might dabble here or there. I might have someone like a Bill Roach come on and talk about some of the things that they're interested in, but uh, again, the purpose was to really get the word out there about this conference that is being hosted by the International Society of Christian Apologists on the topic of social justice. So I appreciate your patience with me, 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 me. Um, on that issue. I know some of you uh, who are just like, what, what's this episode about? And, uh, and that's what it was about more than anything else. So maybe we'll talk about that some more after I do a little more reading on it, but for now we're going to keep on track and talk about uh, some social justice related stuff this morning and and this is just stuff i woke up to uh, as i checked my messages uh this stuff just was uh this was right there and so i thought you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about this a little bit and it's uh, has to do with the grove city college stuff so i want to let you know um by way of reminder grove city college christian institution uh famous for not taking government subsidized uh, money and um, thought to be very solid in the conservative, the political conservative world, but also to some extent in the uh, Christian world. And so uh, it's a school in Pennsylvania. And uh, a few months ago, there was uh, a big outcry about social justice infiltration at the school. There were several chapel messages that were, I mean, we would not be inaccurate to describe them as woke. I did a whole montage, I watched all of them and then I've just put together some of the high points so people could see the, the videos on Gab. Um, there's a, there was a big outcry about uh, some implicit bias training and then a course that was also being offered uh, on campus that was just judging by the poster and the curriculum that was being used blatantly pro uh, CRT. It, the, the attempt from the school has been to try to say that no, that's actually just we're teaching about CRT, but that's clearly not the case. And so, um, you know, this is something that I focused on a little bit, and then it kind of died down a little bit, but it's flaring up again. And the reason I think it's important is because Grove City uh, can be a model for, for political conservatives and Christians to 
apply pressure on other campuses uh, for other colleges because th this has been something especially that as I've worked on this within the Southern Baptist Convention where those campuses just double down they call you a liar they say you're motivated by racism they don't want to admit that anything wrong has happened I mean and Grove City College has done something very similar it's just not working as well at Grove City College and I think there's a few reasons for that I think they've had outside pressure it's not coming from within a, their denomination they're an independent school so you have the Daily Wire getting involved you have American Reformer I think um, another aspect of this is uh, it is a little smaller, and you have a lot of political conservatives going to the school, and that makes a big difference. And they're aware of their political conservatism, and they're proud of it. And so they can recognize these things, and they're not going to buy the Kool-Aid, a lot of the people. Some of them definitely do, but not, not everyone does. And so um, I think that's one of the reasons that this has um, ended up a little different than some of the other schools that have uh, had whistleblowers and people calling attention to what's happening there. Uh, this also, uh, that, that now there's faculty getting involved. And that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit today is uh, this new evidence that there's faculty getting involved in this whole um, issue. And I'd like to suggest this is what needs to happen on other campuses. And, and if anything, this is the time, if you're at Grove City and, and you know, if you're, this is the time I'd come out and I'd start talking about this is what's happening. You know, if you've gone through the proper channels, which it sounds like a lot of people have, and you're not getting anywhere, you know, the only leverage you have uh, is the public, uh, the donors, really, and public perception. And so uh, let's talk about this a little bit. So um, there's a website I want you all to know about. This is uh, CRT at GCC. So I guess that's supposed to be critical race theory at Grove City College. CRT at gcc.wordpress.com. CRT at gcc at uh, uh, .wordpress.com. And if you go on this website, this is a student uh, who has kind of created an archive uh, by date of all the different things happening. You can see some of my videos, but, but the, the different developments on campus. And... Uh, when it comes to this whole Grove City College uh, debate and you know whether or not um, well it's not even a question of whether or not clearly critical race theory has been um, promoted in some way on campus but whether or not Grove City is going to do anything about it and if we get to the bottom here uh, February 7th which is yesterday as I'm recording this there's a faculty letter and uh, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit um, but there's also there's just a lot of things that you know, if you're interested in this particular topic, uh, you know, January, January 29th, uh, fall chapel review. Um, if you click on it, you find this is their, I guess, their campus newsletter. Uh, you have uh, a story, and it talks about students who are upset about what's been taught in chapel and how it's woke, essentially. So, you know, more, just more evidence. Uh, you have... Um, uh, there, there was a chapel here, if uh, I could find it. Ch fall Chapel, in, no, that's not it. There was a recent chapel um, that they did not record, I guess, publicly, but uh, I'm assuming a student must have recorded, and um, it was for MLK Day. And so that chapel uh, is uh, was interesting because it showed that th they were really not Com slowing down completely on this whole uh, well let me let me just play for you one little clip Lord we do not doubt that through MLK and beyond him you holy God of the prophets are still pledged to justice and peace and liberty for all we remember MLK and 222 in gratitude and sorrow and we pledge amid our stress ambiguities to dream as they did, to walk the walk, and to talk the talk of your coming kingdom. We're confident that your truth will not stop its march until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that was Reverend uh, Don Opitz you're hearing um, praying in chapel, just a small clip there. And 
I mean, this this <laughs> he's talking about Desmond Tutu and Martin Luther King Jr., which we've talked about these figures on this podcast before. Neither of them Orthodox Christians, not even close, not even close, not even in the ballpark. And, uh, you know, praying, you know, that God would essentially help us, the people at Grove City College, the students there, to be like them and to realize their their dream, the kingdom of heaven, you know, coming down to earth, uh, that, that that was God's kingdom, uh, because apparently what they did was uh, that was part of God's kingdom and forwarding God's kingdom. And, um, you know, no one would deny some of the good things that MLK and uh, Desmond Tutu have done. But uh, to cloak it in the religious terminology uh, that they cloaked it in is just, it's, it's false teaching. It's not, it's not the gospel. It is, um, these were men who had uh, major theological issues, and for MLK, major character flaws as well. And, uh, you know, there's, there's got to be a way that you can uh, highlight some of the good things that they've done without buying into their heresy. <laughs> And not giving the impression to the students that these are great Christian leaders or people to emulate because of their faith, because they're not. So um, that kind of thing is is happening, and uh, and, and there seems to be a bit of a I don't know a cover up, some, some uh, an attempt to uh, you know put, put not record that, not put it online. Um, uh, this I mean I've seen the same thing happen at Southeastern and and other places where there's someone who calls attention to what's going on, that person's called a liar, and then everything goes underground. Well, if nothing was happening, why does it go underground? That's the question. But um, more to the point today, let's let's talk about this. Uh, this is the Grove City College faculty letter. And this is interesting to me. It's an open letter to the Grove City College Board of Trustees. And it says, we are writing to you as current full-time faculty members at Grove City College. This isn't parents and students anymore. This is faculty. And this is what has needed to happen at all these other places. The faculty is always late, if ever. They, they rarely ever get involved. This is the, I've seen every institution, uh, and I mean every institution I've ever been part of, I have witnessed cowardice uh, on the part of faculty and administration, the, those that I have known. And it's, there's uh, an unwillingness to rock the boat, to jeopardize your job. There's just a loyalty to the institution and the brand which is uh, sometimes, frankly, disgusting to me. And I've seen this cowardice. I've seen it um, play out in ways that uh, are not just re regarding social justice. I've seen it when it comes to character flaws. You know, um, why did Jerry Falwell get away with everything that he got away with for years, uh, over a decade? Why? Um, and it, the stories that were coming out, and I'm just using one example. I could talk about Southeastern, uh, I, I, I'm choosing to talk about liberty just because recently there was a whole, another um, expose of Jerry Falwell and, you know, he claiming it, he's saying he never claimed he was a Christian, all of this. And, you know, the thing that made me sad about it wasn't as much Jerry Falwell as it was all the stories that I know about that w were spreading like wildfire on campus after this happened of all the faculty, all the administration, uh, the admins who knew exactly what was going on. Because Jerry Falwell would show up inebriated to meetings, and um, and people had gone to his house and seen drugs, and you know this is the and, and you before it even happened, and it was exposed by secular media. Uh, you, there were several faculty members, like many faculty members that had been there a long time, that would drop little hints that they knew something was very wrong. And the question is, you know, why was nothing ever done about it? Why, why was there a lack of courage? Um, you know, and, and I, anyway, I don't want to get too bogged down in that situation. I'm just saying this is, this is standard for uh, faculty and administration and people who re are relying on an institution for their own income and to support their families. It's just human nature. We, we don't want to jeopardize a good thing if we have a good thing going. And so and some, it ends up that uh, things get worse. You kick the can down the road, and you end up with real problems. And you don't just end up um, with, you, you know, you end up getting hurt in the long run anyway, and so do a whole lot of other people, not to mention the reputation of Christ in the process. And so uh, anyway, I'm impressed to see that you have some faculty that are actually even doing this. So they're writing this as full-time faculty. Um, they're a diverse group that represent multiple academic disciplines. 
Over the years, we have appreciated the college's culture of con co collegiality and cooperation. Uh, we've been content to go about our daily work serving students and avoiding controversy. When problems do arise from time to time, we prefer them addressed through regular channels and established processes. We believe that it is appropriate, this is the appropriate way to handle conflict. However, the recent controversy regarding critical race theory requires a different approach. Amen. As we have observed the institutional response to this controversy over the past few months, we have concluded that basic institutional processes are broken. Absent immediate attention and prompt reform, we fear that the damage the college has suffered will become permanent. For this reason, we have decided to take the unusual step of appealing directly to you. We take this step anonymously because we have watched how senior administration have handled this crisis and do not believe our concerns would be met with professional honor. We have seen how President McNulty has publicly rebuked parents for raising concerns about the education of their sons and daughters. We've also heard him negatively characterize these parents behind closed doors in faculty meetings. Now that is interesting. That is fascinating to me. Um, these actions are unbecoming of a Christian college president, and they demonstrate an entrenched combative posture. In the context of this behavior and the campus atmosphere is created, we believe that revealing our identity could result in reprisals from senior administration, perhaps even non-renewal of our annual faculty contacts, contracts. As a member of the Grove City College Board of Trustees, you have the ultimate responsibility to preserve the college's mission and identity to ensure its financial well-being. We believe both are at risk for three reasons. First, the approach to CRT at the heart of the current controversy do not align with historic, uh, the historic mission and identity of Grove City College. They talk about um, Education 290 class, cultural diversity and advocacy. Uh, and um, let's see here. Uh, let's see if I can scroll ahead here. says um, it, it takes a page here from the 2020 to 21 Grove City College Bulletin and uh, rather let's see it's saying the Grove City College portrays itself as rather than political ideologically or philosophical agendas objective truth continues as the the goal of liberal learning um, it also highlights and while many points of view are examined the college unapologetically advocates preser preservation of America's religious political and economic heritage of individual freedom and responsibility so they're trying to point out that Grove City College is advertising one thing and doing another in some sectors so um, they're, they're really taking a shot at this education 290 uh, let's see here Program on Justice, Race, and Reconciliation. In fall 2020, a two-week program offered by the Office of Campus Ministries and Office of Multicultural Education and Initiatives presented an exclusively progressive perspective on race in America. And it talks about the Chapel Series, Brian Stevenson, Jamar Tisby being two. And, and then it calls Grove City back to their conservative values uh, and what they advertise they're about and how they're not uh, actually being consistent with that. They talk about the RA training. So these are a lot of the things that we've already gone over. Um, they, they say that the administrative actions have alienated Grove City College's core constituency and weakened the institution's competitive position in the higher education marketplace, which is, that is spot on. Uh, I mean, look, if you want to have... All you have to say is we're not woke and you're going to get a bunch of students come at this point because everywhere else is. Third, the administrative decisions proceeding and in response to the current CRT controversy must be understood as the product of broken institutional processes. And they, they go into detail about this. And so they have some recommended actions. Conduct a full and independent review of all concerns raised by parents in the initial CRT peti pe uh, petition, as well as in their follow-up response and provide a public report detailing the findings of the investigation. Conduct a full and independent review of the actions undertaken by the college president and executive leadership team over the past three months in response to the CRT petition and provide a public report detailing the findings of that investigation. Conduct a full and independent review of the stru uh, structures, policies, and practices currently used for establishing new initiatives, hiring personnel, uh, constituting and uh, populating committees, and communicating institutional actions 
to the faculty and provide a report to the campus community detailing the findings of the investigation and take corrective action as warranted by the findings of the above investigations. So they are, you have faculty coming out now and backing the parents and backing the students. And there is a place uh, online, if I understand correctly, let's see, I don't have it pulled up. I know there's a place online where one can go and actually, here it is. Here, I'm going to pull it up here. And if you're a faculty member, you can actually, um, you can sign this. So it's uh, gccletter.card.co, uh, and it's card, C-A-R-R-D, two R's, card.co, C-O, gccletter.card.co, and you can sign the petition privately. So uh, this is, is very interesting. If, if things were um, really conservative and there's no problem and no intimidation and then, then you wouldn't have the you wouldn't have the need for faculty members to go and do this privately. They could do it out in the open. So it tells you that there's more going on behind the scenes uh, than meets the eye. Uh, this was interesting too. Josh Abatoy, who was the original one who broke this story in the American Reformer, uh, points out that there's um, this is interesting. Um, there's a I guess a, a sub, an account on it's getting ugly on Twitter. I guess that's the. <laughs> uh, threatening students with litigation uh, you have the website I just told you about has a Twitter account CRT at GCC CRT at Grove City College right has its own Twitter account and you have um, someone threatening them and that's a student who runs that saying I don't know what sort of litigation will be required to stop this absurd social media campaign you are perpetuating but it will happen even if I have to do it out of my own little law office for no compensation. And this is someone who you click on their profile. Um, you know, it doesn't give a whole lot, but uh, you know, this is someone who claims to be a Christian, who claims to be reformed, and all this stuff. And uh, man, it's just threatening to sue. So, uh, well, uh, interesting. So uh, that's what's going on at Grove City College. Things are getting kind of ugly. And I would um, encourage, you know, the, the verses, the Bible verses I was thinking of with this, Proverbs 11, 3 says, The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. The other proverb is Proverbs 10, 9. He who walks in integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will be found out. And I think we're at the point with Grove City College, the it's not going to work. The um, frankly dishonest and uh, less than honorable ways uh, and, and really um, dirty in some ways, I guess, ways that this is being handled, are it's, it's catching up. Uh, to the administration at Grove City College. They're not able to keep the ruse forever, and uh, it will destroy the college if they don't humble themselves quickly. And so I would ask you to pray for the hearts of the administration and uh, and some of the faculty who have tried to circle the wagons and pretended that nothing significant is going on. Um, and I would include Carl Truman in that. Uh, pray for them. Pray for their hearts, that they would humble themselves they would see uh, the kind of damage that they're doing to their institution, that they would value the input of parents who are seeking an education for their children and paying good money for it and not be dismissive of that. I mean, this is the kind of thing you expect from secular uh, academics, not from Christians. And now that faculty is getting involved, this could be get even more interesting. Uh, but this is what's necessary, and I'm really glad to see that there is a place still. Grove City College is is that place apparently where there's some pushback. N not everyone's just you know bending over and saying, you know what, we just keep us out of it. We don't want to get hit in any crossfire. Let us, we're just going to keep doing our jobs. But there's actually some courage uh, starting to become on display there, and that's what we need. We need more men and women of courage. So. Um, hope that was uh, helpful for you, a little inspirational maybe, and, um, and, and maybe pr uh, an example of what not to do, and hopefully uh, something that will prod you to pray for the situation down there. We certainly hope 
that um, there's there there's a cleaning of house, and that there, the people that there's some massive repentance, and that uh, there's a switching, a changing of directions uh, there as well. So. That's all I had for you today. Just wanted to share that with you. A little update about Grove City College. Uh, God bless. And uh, more coming later this week. Bye now.